Let's say you just created an awesome circuit that requires 5 volts to work properly and you want to make it portable. The easiest way would be to use a small lithium polymer battery in combination with a boost converter to step up the 3.8 volts of the battery to a stable 5 volt output. But to prevent the battery from over discharge, it is advisable to add a TP4056 board between the battery and the boost converter, which also prevents the battery from short circuits and can even charge it up through the micro USB inputs. Only problem is that this setup is relatively big and thus not ideally suited for portable applications. So it would be the best if we have one circuit which can charge up the battery, protect it from over discharge and short circuits and boost the voltage up to 5 volts. A popular board type which can handle most of these jobs are the Adafruit power boosts, but needless to say they are not the most budget friendly option. Luckily though, I recently found those VMOS D1 mini battery shields, which can apparently charge up a LiPo battery and boost its output up to 5 volts. But since the datasheet of the main IC, the TP4510 is only available in Chinese, it is quite hard to grasp all the features the board offers. So in this video, let's do a couple of tests to determine all the available features of the board and measure the efficiency of the boost converter. Let's get started. First off, I desoldered the pesky LiPo battery connector and directly soldered the positive and negative wire of my battery to the appropriate terminals. Now by measuring the voltage at the 5V pin, we can see that the circuit successfully boosts the voltage up to 5V without any problems. So let's start the testing by using a 5V power supply in order to charge up the battery to its charging cutoff voltage of 4.2V. After plugging in the micro USB cable, the red LED lights up and the battery gets charged up with a constant current of around 500mA. And by shorting the two solder pads on the back, we should be able to increase the charging current to 1 amp, which was more like 700 milliamps at best. But nevertheless, once 36 minutes has passed and the battery voltage reached 4 volts, the charging process entered the constant voltage mode. And after a total time of around one and a half hour and at a cutoff voltage of 4.186 volts, the green LED lighted up, which means the charging process was done. So all in all, the constant current and voltage charging mode worked nicely. Only the charging current was a bit low. Another useful feature is that when the micro USB cable is connected, the boost circuit automatically disconnects and the 5V output delivers the USB power. But you should be careful when disconnecting the USB cable, since it creates a small overvoltage on the outputs. Now for the next tests, I desoldered the LiPo battery wires due to safety reasons. Instead, I connected my LabBench power supply to the battery input of the circuits, since I can simulate different battery voltages with it and also set a current limit in case something goes wrong. On the output side of the circuit though, I connected my DIY power logger and a potentiometer as the first loads. To start the efficiency tests, I first utilized a battery voltage of 4.2V, slowly increased the load on the output, wrote down the output current slash power and the input power and repeated this process until I had 4 values. Then I changed the battery voltage to 3.7V repeated the measuring process and finally lowered the battery voltage to a rather low value of only 3 volts and obviously repeated the measuring process as well. At this point, the highest output current draw was only around 40 milliamps. So to increase it up to the maximum claimed output current of 1 amp, I removed the potentiometer and replaced it with a couple of different high power resistors. Now while measuring the outputs and input power with those resistors, the output voltage was pretty much constant, at least until I used a 15 ohm resistor. This one drew 330 milliamps at 5 volts, which seemed normal at first, 
but once I lowered the input voltage down to the nominal voltage of the battery, the output voltage collapsed, which means that the maximum output current of the circuit is only around 300 milliamps and not 1 amp. But nevertheless, I then used the recorded values to create a chart which represents the efficiency over different output current draws. The first thing to notice is that the higher the battery voltage is, the higher the overall efficiency is. Next, it is also mentionable that the maximum efficiency of 90.2% is reached at a current draw of 110 milliamps, and the overall efficiency never falls below 83%, which is actually pretty decent. So all in all, the boost converter's efficiency is fine but the maximum output current of only 300 milliamps is an eyesore. Now let's see at which point the output voltage cannot maintain the 5 volt outputs by slowly decreasing the input voltage. As you can see at a voltage of around 2.6 volts, the output voltage breaks down, close to underneath the input voltage. That basically means that there is no over discharge protection and the circuit will completely drain your battery if you are not careful. Last but not least, let's set a current limit of 2 amps at the input and short the output of the circuit. As you can see, the output voltage breaks down, but the short circuit current of 2 amps still flows, which means that the circuit does not feature a short circuit protection either. So let's come to a conclusion. The charging of the LiPo battery works decently. The boost converter works flawlessly as well, but its maximum output current is pretty low. But on the other hand, due to its low quiescent input current of only 13 microamps, my 1100 mAh battery could power the circuit for 9.6 years. The only truly negative aspects of the circuit is that there is no over discharge and short circuit protection. But if you are familiar with electronics, then this should be a fair trade for such a cheap $2 board. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Feel free to write suggestions on what I should test next in the comment section. And as always, stay creative and I will see you next time.